for me to move on to what I'd like to talk to you about today. And that is about remote working. Um, but uh, but don't worry, because I'm not going to be telling you about how to use Zoom for video calls or about some apps you can use for messaging each other. What I am going to be talking to you about is how you can build an emphatically positive company culture and how you can connect people virtually in deep and meaningful ways. Because I believe that you can create bonds with people that last a lifetime with people you haven't met and may never meet in person. Before we get into that, just a little bit of reflection on why you might be here today. Um, if there are any any of these reasons, I think it's a very very good good reason to have come. It could be to get have it could be to be gathering insights on how to develop culture and optimize your own remote or hybrid working styles. Is it to suss out how to attract more people and talent to your own team or company? Could it be to better understand how to embrace and implement first class flexible working initiatives? Or do you want to help transform the industry and to challenge the way things have been done previously, looking for better ways to approach things? Or is it just to experience what a virtual 2D conference feels like with a view to utilizing this tech for your own teams or clients? And you should leave today with, with answers to these questions. Now, let me tell you a little bit about why we are here today putting on this event. We want to make our industry, medical communications, or healthcare communications, or pharma communications, whatever you'd like to call it, really, the kind of place that we want to be. We want to showcase the latest and greatest in digital tools and tech to engage people from the people we work alongside to healthcare professionals to patients. And we want to attract and retain the best talent in the industry, not just for ourselves, but for other companies in the medicoms industry too. And by doing so, raising the talent bar in the industry itself. We want to provide insights on what people want when it comes to flexibility in their working lives. And to achieve this, we want to share ideas and best practices so that you can take them forwards in your own ways. So how did I get here to where we are today? Um, to start this story, we need to step back in time to those office based days um, or office based only days, I should say, if you remember those. Uh, in 2009, I started a PhD in biomedical sciences in warm, sunny Aberdeen. I spent four years working on a drug target for type 2 diabetes, despite loving the lab itself, the academic career path, it just wasn't the one I wanted. And so like many people before me, I stumbled upon medical writing. And 2013 was then my first step into a career as a medical writer. I worked for a cool little company called Porthouse Medical in Reading doing medical affairs and, and med ed. It was great, superb people, brilliant training, but the traffic into work was a nightmare. What was just under a 20 minute journey took over an hour every day twice a day and as i honed my medical writing skills i found the office environment increasingly distracting i was constantly reaching for my earphones to sort of try and listen to things to block out the noise and i longed for my own space to work in a bit like in episodes of the TV show Mad Men back in the 1960s, where they sort of had individual offices um, in the office, you know, or some with two people in, that sort of private space. This is the space I seeked, which could quite have simply been my own desk at home. I had the briefs, I had the internet, and at home I had the focus to produce wonderful words for my clients. How hard could it be, I thought. Really hard, it turned out. I mean, convincing anyone of the idea of working from home was impossible back then. Uh, I think before COVID, only around 4% of companies offered any kind of remote working. And that led me to moving companies to a creative digital health agency called Big Pink, this time in Windsor. Again, brilliant people, fun office vibes. Everyone had Nerf guns. Uh, you had to be on like high alert all times for getting shot. But it simply lacked freedom. And I had a two-year-old daughter at that time I wanted to be around to watch her grow up more than anything else. And so I set out to live life on my terms. Word Monster was born 
and I intended to create a remote first company that worked for me and that would hopefully work for others who thought like me too. We started off supporting MedEd and creative agencies with their overflow medical writing projects. And as our team grew and our experience grew, so did our expertise and our range of services. But one thing has remained at the heart of our being, if you like, and that's our flexibility in how we work with our clients. We work with all kinds of clients, all different sizes in several ways, now supporting them far beyond medical writing with things like their own website SEO and social media, and even their own training of junior medical writers. We've kind of set out now to solve entire business challenges for our clients, helping them to build for the future, which takes me on to our mission, really, that underpins this whole event. And that is transforming healthcare communication support worldwide. And to me, this means a lot of different things. It means producing the best communications possible through having the best people, which is ultimately of benefit to patients. And this all starts with transforming culture. From the way that we treat people with kindness and respect, from the freedom we offer people in how they work, giving them the autonomy to choose what works best for them. And that we also don't expect too much of people in terms of hours worked. And I think that especially in medcoms, you know, you, you, you hear the phrase, it's just medcoms. And that for me just, just doesn't sit right. We also want to push the digital boundaries in healthcare and share our thoughts and knowledge with others in the industry, hence why we're here today. And we want to demonstrate that complete freedom and flexibility for people can work for your teams too. Um, ultimately, we want to make the bedcoms industry a brilliant place to be so that people never want to leave. Fantastic people in medcoms, from medical writers to account directors, are hard to come by. But it hasn't really been like that for us. And it's all been thanks to the way we think. We're blessed with attracting brilliant people into our organization, people who want to join us on our mission to shape the industry. We've not once used a recruiter for hiring, for example. And while the remote working revolution had already begun before COVID, it's completely transformed what people are looking for and it's now expecting in, the, in their roles. This isn't the case for everybody, but so many people no longer want long commutes and being stuck in traffic. People don't want set hours. People want flexibility in, 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 in how they work. And they want to take back control of their lives, being able to put life before work in, in some cases. And that's exactly what we've built. It's what we call our life first culture, the freedom to choose, the freedom to do great work and to live a happy life and prioritize those moments in life that are important around getting something done with good communication, setting expectations. It can truly be done and you and you can have it all. But with working remotely comes isolation. That's something that people have I've spoken to at length. In, in, in the past. So how do we avoid feeling cut off from the world when working remotely? For me, working remotely doesn't mean just chatting on Teams. There's so much more that you can do that can enrich a culture, so much more you can do to engage people and to keep people feeling connected and build relationships with people remotely. I'm a massive gamer. I'm a massive gaming nerd. I grew up playing all the classics on the SNES, the Mario's, the Zelda's, the PlayStation, the Xbox. And I got into PC gaming in my teens with a dodgy dial up connection like the rest of us. And through these games, I made friends online, friendships that lasted years. And later on, when I was sort of 24, I invited one of my gaming friends to visit me. He came all the way over from Canada when we were in Aberdeen with he, he, he stayed with myself and, and my wife, Jen, who you uh, may have seen on reception this morning. And um, being in person was awesome. He stayed with us for about a week. And really what this experience taught me was that you can develop really strong and meaningful, lasting relationships virtually without ever meeting people. But not just that. It also taught me the power of games behind building relationships. And this idea or 
theory about my own experience that I've been reflecting on has actually been proven. This is this is the case. Um, a really interesting book written by a lady called Jane McGonigal called Reality is Broken talks about how playing games with others builds trust and improves cooperation. So knowing that you have someone's back in a pretend zombie apocalypse in a game sort of so elegantly translates back to the working environment where you're working on projects as a team and especially in times when shit hits the fan and so games are a large part of our culture our relationship building and i think one of the secrets to our success jane's also given an awesome ted talk about how gaming can make a, make a, make a better world and uh, yeah i'd really highly recommend you check that out and uh, the sort of phrase that I'd, I'd, I'd coined was teams that play together stay together and i think that's true but it's not just all about games in the pure sense of playing some games with people for fun there are loads of other places to find elements of gaming for connection across various digital tools virtual reality is one it's great for simple conversations. Virtual offices, like the space we're on now, is another. Um, online whiteboards like Miro that you're probably familiar with, um, if you've been collaborating, doing creative you know, workshops and such, great for collaboration. And then there are games, things like Gartic, which is just a simple drawing game, a bit like Scribble that you, you can try out later. This is Sand, another game where you can draw landscapes out of sand, essentially. Very, very therapeutic. And there are loads of these types of games that you can try out in the game room today. So I'd say give it a whirl. And who knows, maybe you'll make a friend for life. <laughs> VR itself adds a whole nother dimension to remote working. When you're in a room together, it actually feels like you're together. You can explore worlds together. You can bond with people in ways beyond what's actually possible in the real world. You can watch shows together, all sorts. I won't say too much more about VR because you'll be seeing all of this later in our VR, VR talk at 1.30. But the applications of VR in the working environment are vast as well. And there are so many applications of VR with the kind of services that we do. Things like ad boards, brainstorming, VR podcasts. This is actually a screenshot that me uh, of, of me and Leslie in a, in, a, in a podcast that we did. It was a pilot. It went really, really well. It was a really, really good, good use of, of VR. So things like talking heads videos, they're very, 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 very common in, in meta fairs around events. They could be done in VR too. So how do we make digital work for us at WordMonster? Remote working has evolved for us and for everybody. We started on Skype. Excuse me. We started on Skype for our messaging, using the group chats as hubs for connection. It worked brilliantly for years. And Zoom became our go-to for video calls, which of course became hugely popular through COVID. Uh, we've now switched across to Teams for our kind of core business messaging and functions. We then trialed an app called Discord, and this lets you create sort of rooms that we gave names to. So we had things like the library, the open office, the help room. You can't see each other. When you're in the room, you can hear each other. And we tried creating you know, different places for different vibes and different work styles. <clears throat> but it didn't quite work because you couldn't see people. And I think not knowing what someone was up to meant you didn't want to sort of interrupt them. So it worked OK for a while. It was almost doing what we wanted, but it didn't quite hit the mark. But then more recently, we moved to Gather for our day to day office and we have not looked back. This, coupled with VR, virtual reality for our monthly meetings, is just working brilliantly to keep us connected and engaged. This is actually one of our VR team meetings this is what it looks like when we all get together. Um, people don't have to join in VR either. You can join as an external participant, which is how you'll be joining later. Um, if you would like to, if you have a headset and you'd like to have a, have, have a go with this, you can just let us know. We'd be happy to invite you into a room and we can have a have a cup of coffee with our VR headsets on. I've done that a few times now with uh, with, with clients and, and partners. It's worked brilliantly. Um, in here, as you'll hear more about later, um, you can change the room layout so that you can present, you can have conference calls, breakout rooms, and you can even connect your computer. So 
at, that you can access while in, in VR. So when you're in VR, you can see a computer that's in front of you, which is exactly what's on your real computer. And you can do this little pass through thing. So you can see a keyboard. It's a little bit grainy, but you can still see where things are. So you can literally do normal computer work inside VR. And this is only getting better with the release of new headsets like the Apple one, which some of you um, may have seen recently. Just another example of a room simply hanging out in VR. It's great for just chucking on, having a one-to-one -one chat. It gives you something different, a different sort of vibe. The best part of it is that the audio is spatial. And what that means is that you can hear people who you're sat directly next to. So you can have private conversations and the rooms actually have breakout rooms and such. So that they're designed for workshopping and then collaborating. Our office keeps us connected day to day. This is our sort of our main office. We have other rooms all over the place, portals that you kind of get lost in sometimes. Um, but this is our, our core view. And yeah, really, really in, um, highly, highly invite you to come along for a tour later on to check it out firsthand. And we can show you all the different rooms and, and how we use it. Uh, but just to go through a couple of the features, so everyone has their own desk. So when you're working, doing your normal work, you're sat at your desk. Um, you can pop over to somebody else whenever you need them. And your camera can be off so that you don't get sort of interrupted or anything like that. Um, and there's a little like dial tone. So if someone is AFK or they're, they're not in the browser or, or, or the app, it just does a little little ding dong and then you can come and, and start a conversation. It's so brilliant for knowing what people are up to, where they are, so that you can engage them. You can go over to that. You can poke your head into a meeting if it's already going on and say, oh, hey, Sarah, can I can I just pick your brain for two minutes? So someone's just asked me this. You can interrupt meetings. You can't do that on Zoom or Teams. It just gives you everything that feels like a real office. You get things like those water cooler moments when you pass people by and you can have, I've already said about meetings, yes, you can get together in, 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 in rooms for meetings and, 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 and just knowing what people are up to is really, really helpful for collaboration because you can pop in and, and, and join the conversation. You can invite guests. You can hold interviews. We've held interviews in here and people have really, really enjoyed that, um, that platform. It's great to be able to have an interview with someone and give them a tour of your virtual office. What a cool thing to do. And you can bring clients in too um, and sh sh show them about the space. Every space is customizable as well. <clears throat> you can change your avatar. You may have stumbled across that. Um, so feel, feel free to do that now while you're watching or, or, or whenever you like. You can change what you look like. You can make it look professional or you can choose like a zombie or there are different sort of avatar characters. It's a little bit strange sometimes when um, when 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 Laura in our office um, is dressed as a gingerbread man, when she's sideways, you can't really see her because it's, it's so thin. But have a have a play with all the different emotes. Give them a go. Um, you can edit your name, as many of you have already done. If you do want to put where you're from today, feel free to add that on um, so that you can have 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 conversations and people know what's what. Uh, and yeah, you can have specific rooms for, for specific teams or meetings as well. So we've got here a kind of co-working space. Great for if instead of being at your desk, you want to have a little chit chat while you're doing your work. And um, we even have a lunch area over here. And these trucks are linked to Uber Eats and Just Eat. So technically, you can order your food directly from the space and have it delivered to your door. It's yeah, it's, it is pretty, pretty good. Oh, I think my headset just went off then. Can you still hear me OK? Um, and importantly, it allows us to play games from drawing games, chess and poker to go kart races. But it's not all about our own culture and our own team. There's a serious business case for spaces like this as well. Ways that we are using this, things like congresses like today, congresses, large ones. You can have 500 people in a space and you can connect the spaces together. So you can have thousands of people crossing different places. The large businesses, you can have different spaces for different departments that can cross between each other and portal across. There is nothing that you can't do. Um, simple things like advisory board meetings, I think a great use. Workshops, fantastic. And other events, training, things like that. You name it, this space is great for it. So what else can you do to keep connected 
while working apart. We have things like weekly wellbeing Wednesdays. We could be sat on the cushions having a chat about our mental health toolkits, things that can help us, or simply watching a TV show together. This is one that we jumped in VR just to watch something. But you don't have to have a VR headset to do all these things or to engage people like this. You know, there's an app for everything these days. The point is, there are so many ways that you can engage. Despite being a giant advocate for remote working, we do still love to meet up in person now and again. And we put on optional days for the team throughout the year. In addition to our four core social events, here we were. I think one of these is last year. One of these is in Bristol. And um, I think it is important to have a element of human interaction. Um, but they're optional. If people want to come along, they can. If they're, if they're busy or it's too far away, they don't have to come along because remote first is the way that we approach it. Remote life certainly works for our team. And thanks to the new tools and tech, it is only getting better. Our approach to work is working. We're proud of our culture, and I hope that you've heard something amongst all of this that you can take through into your own team, company, organization. Together, let's shape the industry for the better. Thank you very, very much for listening to me. Um, that is all for me for the moment. I will catch you a little bit later.